Hi guys and welcome to Log Cabin Gaming. Today we've got a special tutorial for you. The Mega Boss Gordrak on his Moor Crusher Big Teeth. This tutorial will be split over three videos, uh, each detailing how I painted the Mega Boss, the Moor Crusher and the base separately. You can find the link for the other two videos in the description below. In order to make sure you don't miss any other videos we post, please subscribe and enable notifications to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Now that that's out of the way, let's get cracking. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start painting all the skin with Death World Forest. So this is just um, coat all the skin, uh, thin, thin down your paints and if you need to you can always go over it with a second coat. When you're finished with the skin what I'm just going to do now is going to get some Screamer Pink and I'm just going to pick out his tongue. Next step is to grab some flash kits yellow and from here I'm just going to paint all of his yellow armor panels in this flash kits. You don't have to be too neat with this because um, our steps later down the line will neaten this up. But just make sure that you don't get any yellow on the green that you've just painted. Once the yellow is dry we're going to switch it up and move to some contrast paints. Here I've got some black Templar. Um, make sure you shake it well but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover all of the armor panels here uh, with black Templar. You can also start painting the weapons, anything that's going to be metallic with this. However I prefer to use a bad and black because it gives a nicer finish. Um, but yeah so we're just going to cover all the armor panels um, with black Templar. If you're not sure which of the pieces you want to cover just check the box art and that will give you a good indication. Right, so what we want to do now is we're going to do a bit of dry brushing. So we're going to dry brush his uh, weapons in lead belcher. We're also going to dry brush all the chain mail that you can see. Just going to lightly dry brush all over the bits here. They're going to be metallic. Said all of his chains, this chain mail here. Now, what I tend to do, and this is optional, is I tend to just lightly dry brush the armor as well, just to pick out the um, the sharp edges. So we want to. Still leave most of the black underneath it, but we're kind of just giving it a weather-worn, beaten-up look with a just light dry brush of a uh, lead belcher on the um, black armor bits. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to get Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to paint his trousers in this. With the Mechanica Standard Grey now dry, we are going to paint the wooden bits on top of his headpiece. So I've got my Wildwood Contrast, um, and I'm going to give it a good shake. And I'm just going to get a bit on my brush, and I'm just going to paint it on this piece of his headdress here. OK, 
Okay, with the wildwood now dry, we are going to take Raycar flesh and we are going to paint all the bone bits with that. So, just thin down my paint and we're going to paint this skull here. And these little tags here. Now's a good time paint these bits as well. I also want to paint his teeth. Also, you want to paint any wrappings on the model in Raycar Flesh. Right, and then I'm going to take Katachan Flesh, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to base coat the, uh, the wood on the weapon grips. Just noticed I've missed the uh, the metal end here. So I'm gonna paint that black uh, and then dry brush it. Lead belcher as well, once I've finished this. Make sure you do both weapons. There it is with the Katachan flesh dry. I've also done the back of the um, uh, the post there. I've painted the weapon there black because uh, we've got one more step of lead belcher to do. So that's going to be convenient uh, for later. Right, so this step now, we're going to get Mornfang, Mornfang Brown. We're going to paint all the leather straps in Mornfang Brown. Take your time because you don't want to get it on the yellow armor, but if you do, that's fine. You can just grab a clean brush, um, wet it with some water and uh, wipe the paint off. We're also going to do his belt out the back here. Um, And any bits of twine that are holding, you know, symbols or medals or anything on, okay? I'm going to do this for the rest of the model, then we'll be back. And with the Mornfang Brown dry now, we are going to move on to the next step. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get uh, Retributor Armour and paint the uh, the mask here on his knee and also on the face here there's a couple more lightning bolts which uh, look very sigma right so I'm going to paint those in Retributor armor okay right, okay now I'm going to take my Retributor armor and I'm just going to paint all the gold bits um, 
that I want. So mainly the Stormcast tokens that he's got on his knee pads. Remembering to do these little lightning bolts here as well. Okay, next I'm going to take my Abad and Black. Some Abad and Black here. And I am just going to paint. the hair here okay with the abandoned black done what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Mechanica standard grey and I'm going to grab a dry brush And I'm going to just gently dry brush the hair here to lighten it up, leaving it black towards the end. And then, once that's done, I'm going to grab some uh, what do you want? Celestra Grey, I think. You might be able to put in a, a mid layer of uh, Dawnstone or Administratum grey, but we're just going to go straight into the Celestra grey. And this is just to lighten this up again. So we're practically going to be making it white. Still leaving it a bit black towards the end. Right, okay, now that is the final step before we add our washes. So, what I'm going to do now, and what I'd probably encourage you guys to do, is to uh, go over the model with all the colours we've just used to just um, tidy up any of the, the paint. Um, there'll be certain spots that you might have missed, or that have become chipped, or that you haven't done. So, just go over the model. Uh, tidy it all up and then we'll be back and start applying the washes. Okay, when you're happy that you've uh, touched up all you need to do, we are going to start applying some washes now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my washes and I'm going to get four of them just to speed up the process for you at home watching this. So I've got null oil, and we're going to use this for all the metallic bits. So all the chains, the axes, any kind of little jewellery. We're going to use Agrax Earthshade on all the wooden bits. Um, and the wraps, so uh, all the materials and uh, all of the wooden bits. We are going to use Seraphim Sepia. We're going to do that on all the bone areas and these little uh, trinkets here. And then finally, we've got a Thonian Camo Shade, and we are going to do that on all the skin. Um, so, yeah, so let's get going here. Just going to apply it with a uh, medium shade brush. If it pulls, you can just wick it away with the brush. I'll probably just do the tongue with that as well because you won't really see it when their face is on. Oh yeah, and I'll do the teeth. Um, probably do the teeth in Agrax Earthshade rather than <clears throat> Seraphim Sepia. But that's just personal preference. 
you can see we're starting to get some depth to the model now. So I'm going to carry on doing this for all the colours that we said. And I'm going to do Agrax Earthshade on this black hair as well. Okay, um, and Null Oil on all the gold bits. So I'm going to do all that. And then I'm going to leave the model to dry for an hour and then we'll be back. Okay, I'm doing Agrax Earthshade on the... Um, all the wooden bits, even though we've done this in contrast, I'm not happy with uh, how it looks. I'm still gonna Agrax Earthshade it. Make sure I get all the leather wrappings and belts and what have you. I need to get all of the uh, wrappings around his arms as well and legs and the weapon grips. If you want, you can apply a bit to his fingernails. Then we're going to do Seraphim Sepia all over the um, anything that's bone. Okay, final bit now is Null Oil all over the metal bits, so all the chains. Chain mail, little stormcast bits, and also I am going to do his trousers. This is down to personal preferences because I want it to be darker. Um, also worth noting, I've picked out the stitching in Mournfang Brown. I don't know if you can see that, but because Null Oil is darker than Agrax Earthshade, you could use Agrax Earthshade. When we layer it later um, with the grey, uh, it will start to feel a bit nicer. So I want it to go darker first before we lighten it up again. With the washes now dry, I've kind of just placed his head on the body just so you can see that he's kind of starting to come together. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, apply some Agrax Earthshade to the bone areas that you want to make darker. This is completely optional. You could either leave it as Seraphim Sepia or have painted them, um, sorry, or you could have washed them in Agrax Earthshade originally. But um, if you want to do a nice transition from light to dark, we're just going to apply a bit of Agrax Earthshade to some of the bone areas now to get that transition from lighter to dark bone. So now this is uh, optional, but if you want, you can take your Agrax Earthshade and start applying it to the base of some of the bone areas to darken it up, leaving the Seraphim Sepia in. So you get a transition from dark bone to light bone. You can just play around with this till, uh, you know, until you're happy with it. Next, we're going to take some Bane Blade Brown and we're just going to edge highlight all the leather straps. So there you can pick out where it's reached. You 
just going to run a bit of edge across everything here. Make sure you do the belt as well at the back. I pick out the stitches as well, just gently rubbing my brush over it, just to give them a bit of lighter colour. So I'm going to do this over the model wherever I've got any leather or Mournfang brown, and then we'll be back. Next, we're going to get a bit of Raycarth flesh. I'm going to start layering. And that big skull on the back of his head. Okay, so what we're just going to do, we're just going to pick out the, all the raised edges, leaving the shade in the recesses. start feathering it up towards the horns as well so you get these uh, effects next we're going to get a bit of Ushabti bow and we're going to do the same thing over the Raycarth flesh so we're going to continue Layering it up a bit towards the highest points. Leaving some of the Raycarth flesh underneath. can also do this for the wrappings here or you can dry brush it it's up to you you can pick out the edges with a bit of a shabti bone just to help emphasize them more I'm gonna do this to all the bone things so you're just gonna pick out the highest bits on all the bone areas, anything that we've painted, Raycarth flesh. So remember to do the teeth and um, the skulls and the bones on the uh, on the face. So now that we've done that, I'm going to get a bit of Memphis and red, and we're just going to do the eyes. So we've got two sets of eyes to do. We've got the big one on the headpiece. So we're just going to paint that red for now. And then we have got the one on Gordrak's face. So just going to gently pick that out. I'm also going to pick out this tie here. I think I want that just as a spot colour there to be red. Yeah, you could probably do it whilst it's wet. And I'm going to get some Evil Sun Scarlet. We're just going to pop that in the middle of each eye, just as a highlight.
I might even do it on his tie here. Just towards the center. And then final piece, a bit of Wild Rider Red. Just leaving a bit of the um, Evil Sun Scarlet and Mephiston Red behind. Okay, when that's dry, this is now, this is only if you want to do it. I'm not 100% happy with that skull on his hair. So I am just going to do a quick coat of Aquax Earthshade over the whole thing to tie it together. It's already been highlighted, so it should just all grade together nicely now. Can even go over the eye just to give it a bit of depth. Next, we're going to take our Death World Forest and uh, we are going to layer the skin. So, let's put that on my palette. I'm going to avoid where the shade has dried in the recesses and we are just going to highlight the top areas. Remember to do his hands, fingers, just avoiding the shade. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do this for all of the, all the green skin, and then we'll be back. Okay, next we're going to take Elysian Green. Now where we've applied the um, Death World Forest, so to like the sharp bits around the, um, the ears and his lips, we are just going to do a bit of a quick second highlight on that. So it's just going to go on the sharpest bits around his nose, eyebrows, just around these features here, just to pick out the most extreme highlights. And the lips and on the actual knuckles. We're gonna pick out the highest, just the highest pieces there where the light would hit it. You might want to do the top end of his muscles as well. Just the very highest ridges. We're now going to layer his trousers with Mechanicus Standard Grey, just in the same way as we've been doing with his face and bone areas. We're just going to take some paint and we're just going to layer the highest pieces, leaving where the shade settled in the recesses and around the um, the stitching on there. I don't know if you can quite see that. Okay, this step is completely optional, but I've got Xerius Purple and Rhinox Hide. I'm going to give them a shake. 
Let me open that. And what I've got here, so I've got just like your common sponge. I'm going to take a little bit off. Just get a bit of the first paint and wipe it off. Kind of like dry brushing. You kind of want it, the sponge to be reasonably dry. And then I'm just going to dab it. Oh, let's take his face off. I'm going to dab it on his weapons, on his swords here, just towards the top. Let's stipple it on there. And then what that's going to do is that's going to give it like a, a pseudo rust effect. Like I said, this is completely optional. A bit of purple. I'm going to stay away from the blade because we want to give the impression that that's um, keen, that he keeps sharpening it. But I'm just going to keep stippling on these browns and purples just onto the top end of the axe until I'm happy with the effect. If you want to mix it up, I'm also going to try a bit of scrag brown onto it to add um, lighter bits of rust. Any light brown will do, depending on what you've got, it's just to muck about with it. As you can see now, it's starting to look a bit rusty. So I'm gonna keep doing this. Okay. There we go, so that's with the scrub brown done and that's looking nice and rusty. Like I said, I've stayed away from the edges because we want those to appear sharp. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. Just gonna wash the bits we've just done in rust. I'm gonna stay away from the edges, like I said, because I do want those to remain in contrast with the rest. Yeah, it's going to wash all over this purpley brown stippling that we've done. All right, I'm going to leave that to dry and then we'll be back. Okay, when the Agrax Earth Shade is dry, you're going to get some iron breaker and a small dry brush. And what we're going to do is we are just going to dry brush all the sharpest bits of his weapon there. You can see it coming to life a bit. Just to show that he is still using it as a keen cutting edge. There we go. We're also going to dry brush all the chain mail, slightly dry, dry brush that and any of these chains that he's got going around. Don't forget the other sword, sorry, don't forget the other axe. Might want to just try and hit some of these little pins here, but it's not an issue if you don't. Also. I'm going to dry brush gently now that we're kind of coming towards the end. The Stormcast helmet here. Just to give that a gentle highlight. May as well do these bolts here. Okay, good. All right, now for the fun stuff. So we're gonna go for like a, a sun-kissed armor effect um, on the Mega Boss. So what I've got is I've got my Flash Gets Yellow that we've already used and I've got some Wild Rider Red. So I am gonna put some Wild Rider Red and some flash kits yellow on my palette side by side. And I'm gonna make them thinner than normal because um, 
we kind of want them a bit uh, fluid to run into each other. So what I'm going to do is quite thin, you'll see, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out each arm panel and now we're going to do a gradient um, going from Wild Rider Red up to um, Flash Gits Yellow. So I'm just going to do some Wild Rider Red there. So you can see it's kind of just a bit rough and ready. Then I'm going to get some Wild uh, Flash Gits Yellow, sorry, and go from the top. Start going down and blending it in. And you'll see them when they hit each other, they'll start to blend. And they start to thin each other out. And I'm going to get a bit of Wild Rider Red again. Just go from the bottom. So we want it to be more solid at the bottom and getting more and more translucent as we go up the armor panel. Like that. The way I do that is I'm gonna get my flash gets yellow and again start from the top, which is fine, and then work our way down. So it's brighter at the top and then it kind of you got the mix between the yellow and the orange as you hit the middle, and then it leaves the solid orange at the bottom. So we're gonna do that. I'm kind of happy with the how the bottom looks. I think the middle is a bit too strong at the minute, so I'm just gonna get some more flash gets yellow. And I'm just gonna keep pulling the paint through into the orange. kind of make it a bit softer so that it's not quite a harsh transition. There we go. have a bit of fun with this you know it's a it's only paint and because it's quite thin even if you make a mistake it's not the end of the world because you could always paint over it but because it's wet it's quite malleable and sometimes you might just want to get a bit of water on your brush start blending the two colors together if it's not how you want it. Bit more Wild Rider Red. You just start pushing the paint around until you're happy with your transition. Sometimes you might find it annoying that you've gone, uh, you've got it to how you want it, and then you've gone beyond it, so you have to come back again. But that's okay. Now I'm going to do this for all the armor panels. Um, it's really going to change the dynamic of this character. Okay, so I'm reasonably happy with that. So as you can see, we've kind of got the, uh, the Wild Rider Red solid at the bottom. And it 
kind of, it fades through to orange, which we've mixed with the Wild Rider, sorry, with the Flesh Gits Yellow, which we've mixed with the Wild Rider Red on the model, and then to just pure Flesh Gits Yellow at the top. And if you create this kind of uneven gradient, it will, uh, it will make the blend not appear as harsh rather than just this straight line. Okay, well I'm going to go and do that for all the other armour panels, um, keeping the orange bits on the bottom, um, working our way up to yellow at the top. Okay, right, and see you guys in a bit. Now with all the armour done, hopefully he looks a little like this, um, down to your personal preference. So now what we're going to do is we're going to edge highlight the armour. So I've got my Dawn Yellow. Uh, let's take the face off and then I am gonna I've given it a good shake and we're just gonna edge highlight all the armor pieces here. All the really sharp, straight edges. Should be able to use the side of your brush for a lot of it, which is nice. That's just gonna accentuate what we've already done with the um, with the orange. Yeah, I'm just gonna go around picking out all the straight edges on his armor, edge highlighting them. Um, just be careful with it, use the side of your brush, be neat. It shouldn't take too long. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that for the whole model. And then we'll be back. With the Dawn Yellow applied, uh, it's just given a, it's just slightly highlighted all the armor panels, which is good. Um, it's very subtle. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade the model using a, um, a wash that I've kind of made. And it's gonna be two parts technical contrast medium, one part Reichland Flesh Shade and one part contrast ironed and yellow. So make sure you give these all a good shake. So we are just going to get two blobs of contrast medium, which is basically contrast paint without the pigment. And we're going to get one blob of iron and yellow. And then we're going to get one blob of Reichland Flesh Shade. You're gonna mix it all up and you're gonna get this kind of browny yellow wash. Okay, and I've got a medium shade brush here. I don't want it to be overloaded, so I'm gonna start on a small piece, but you're gonna shade all the yellow pieces that we've done. Okay, and that's gonna run into all the folds and just accentuate our yellow a bit without making it too yellow because of the Reichland Flesh Shade. It's kind of gonna bring it back a little. And it's gonna tie in the Dawn Yellow and all the blending that we've done. Yeah, you can even do these bits here that, you, that were just left yellow. And now you kind of see you've got this nice kind of fiery orange 
yellow going to it. Okay, so I'm going to do that to all the yellow bits on the armour and give it a good half hour to an hour to dry. And then once it's done, I'm going to um, glue on with super glue uh, the uh, the face and the the front horns or the front bone bits. The reason why I'm not using plastic glue is plastic glue is going to melt any paint surface it touches. Um, and we can't guarantee that we're not going to overspill onto the paintwork where super glue won't do that. So I'm just going to go around, but you can see how it's now, it's kind of, it's bringing everything that we've done together, finally. Um, but yeah, like I said, once this dries, I am going to glue on the last remaining pieces uh, and then we will have a look. Catch you guys in a bit. Right, with the shade now dry and the uh, the horns and the face put on, he is practically there. The, um, I'm very pleased with how the edge highlighting came out. It didn't get lost um, and it just adds that tiny little bit of subtleness to it. But hopefully you guys are happy with the results so far. Just a few final, final pieces to do. Um, I'm going to get some Ushapti bone. And with my Shapti bone, I'm going to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to dry brush just the skull here, just to pick out the top highlights. This bone here, plus these um, teeth or whatever they are. These horns that he's got here. And then the other thing I'm going to do I'm going to dot both eyes on the headpiece and um, the war boss himself, just to give him a, a pupil there. So you could use white, but I'm kind of being lazy and don't want to get it out. You can also pick out the very edges of his teeth just to whiten those as well. That kind of gives you a bit of a gradient through the teeth so they kind of look browner or greyer as they get towards the gum line. Now speaking of gums, uh, we can do one final thing on there. If you look at the box art, You'll notice they're quite pinky. We've done very well with that. I don't know how we're going to do this, but let's try getting some Kisler flesh and Canadian flesh type. And we are just going to draw along his lips. I'm just going to pick that out and his scar as well. This is probably emulating all the capillaries are going to like the the thinnest skin skin pieces. Okay. We'll pick out a bit. On his eyebrows there, maybe on his nose, just to blend it in to the teeth. Okay. Then we're going to get a bit of Kislev flesh and just apply a top highlight to that. Um, just to the very top of his lips here. Okay. 
There we go. All right, I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. Okay, now that the, uh, the flesh tones are dry, I also picked out a bit on his ears um, whilst I was there. I'm going to get some Caraber Crimson. And we're just going to use this to tint the flesh to a kind of a deeper colour. So I'm going to try and give it a more darker colour. There we go. Hopefully it won't look like he's wearing lipstick, but we will see. Kind of just stipple that into the green so you get this general fade to it. Done a bit too much, just get a brush with a bit of water. Just move it around. Probably put a bit more around the scar just to make it look scar tissue. Actually while we're there, I'm gonna put a uh, a little drop on both eyes just to take the glare off the uh, the people. There we go. Right. And all that's left to do now is to mount Gordrak onto Big Teeth and make sure he's securely fastened to the base and add your smattering of usual basing materials and there you go. You have a mighty fine mega boss ready to stomp his way into some good scraps. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was any use to you, feel free to like and subscribe as that helps us get noticed. If you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Feel free to post your pictures on the Log Cabin Gaming Group on Facebook. Until the next time we meet, see you guys later.